Let's unbox a brand new service, AWS Backup for Emerson S3. S3 is definitely the most popular storage option on AWS. But the central place to manage your backups, AWS Backup, was not supporting S3 until now. It supports all the other options, EBS, EFS, RDS, DynamoDB and many more, but S3 was missing. Why? My guess, it was probably the hardest thing to get AWS Backup implemented for S3. With this video, I want to show you what is AWS Backup for Amazon S3, why should you use it? I will have a demo for you to show you everything and then we will go into the pricing question and the limitations of the service. Using AWS Backup is quite simple. So you have resources that store data, in this case an S3 bucket, and you use AWS Backup to create a backup based on a plan or on demand um, of the data stored in the bucket. And the important thing here is with AWS Backup for S3, you have three different options. You have the continuous mode, which allows you to go back in time over a period of 32 days to any point. You have um, periodic backups, which says, for example, once a day I want to snapshot this S3 bucket. Or you can do it one time, for example, before an important event like a deployment or something like that. So that's what we have. And then, of course, it's not only about backing up the data. The most important part is probably restoring the data. That's, of course, also part of the service. It's time for a demo. I want to show you how to create a backup and how to restore a backup for S3. We are looking at the AWS Management Console, and this is my S3 bucket, Photos and Dress, which stores my photo library. So there are a bunch of photos in here, and of course, I don't want to lose that data to keep those memories. So that's why I create a backup for that. So I'm jumping to the AWS backup service. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a one-time backup of my bucket. So let's go to protected resources. I create an on-demand backup. I select S3, choose the bucket. Um, I create backup now. Retention period, I will to keep that forever. I choose the default, I'm row. And then I go to create on-demand backup. Okay, so now AWS Backup creates a backup of this bucket for me. This will take a while. In the meantime, I will accidentally delete all the data in the bucket. So let's do so. So I'm going to the bucket, select all the photos in here and delete all of them. So let's do that. So the bucket is empty now. And I will now restore the bucket from my backup. So let's hope that this worked. So let's restore the data. So I'm going to protected resource. I will find my S3 bucket in here and two different backups. One is the one that I just uh, created and I will restore from that backup now. So we do restoring the entire bucket. You can also do item level restores. Uh, I will restore to the source bucket. You could create a new one or use another one. And I will keep the original encryption and I'm using the default role here. Okay, so that's all. I just go to restore my backup, please. And I hope that this will restore all the objects in my bucket. The restore job completed successfully. So let's jump back to my S3 bucket. So remember, I deleted all the objects within it. And now after I had restored from my backup, everything is back there, the whole photo library available. So that's exactly the result I wanted to share with you. So far, I created an on-demand backup for my bucket, but it is more, probably much more interesting to create a continuous backup or a recurring backup of your data. So let's see how that works. So we go to backup plans, create a new backup. I'm going to build one from scratch. Uh, I name my backup plan demo, the backup rule demo as well. We are backing to the backup vault default. 
daily, the frequency, and then I enable continuous backup, which means you can go back to a specific point in time and restore your data. So that's very interesting, I would say. Um, I'm keeping the defaults for the backup window and the retention period of uh, 35 days, which is the, um, the largest time span that you can have for continuous backups. I'm not copying to any other region, I'm just keeping my defaults here. So now I've created the backup plan and one important thing is missing, I need to assign my resource to the plan. So let's do that. Um, include specific resources and uh, let me just include the photos and trias bucket that I created. Um, I forgot to enter a name here. So assign this resource and now um, the resource gets backupped by this backup plan automatically in a continuous mode, which means it can go back to any point in time within the past 35 days. So you may ask yourself, why should I care about AWS backup for Amazon S3? Because I have S3 versioning enabled for my buckets. Yes, enabling S3 versioning makes sure that when someone deletes an object or overrides an object, you can go back in time for a specific object. But what AWS backup is all about is this is on a bucket level. So it allows you to recover from accidental deletion of objects and versions. So think about someone just with a script deletes all the objects and also all the versions of them. Then it doesn't help to enable versioning, right? So that's a use case for AWS backup. A similar thing is um, think about someone is, yeah, getting access to your AWS account and deletes all the data stored on S3 for any reason. So this is of course also an important aspect of AWS backup because it allows you to create cross-region and cross-account backups of your data. And last but not least, you can able, enable S3 versioning for your bucket but restoring all the objects in the bucket to a certain point in time is not that easy because you have to list all the objects with all the versions and then restore them, which is a lot of API calls and depending on the size of your bucket, this could be an issue. So this might be another use case why AWS backup is important and S3 versioning is also important, but it's doing a little bit a different thing here. Let's talk about costs. So what does AWS backup for S3 cost? So first of all, there's the storage costs. So you pay five cent per gigabyte for warm backup storage. That's one part. Then there's a fee for restoring your data. There's two cent per gigabyte when you restore data. And there are two other things that are harder to calculate. You pay for the get requests on your data stored in S3 when AWS Backup creates a backup for you and you do pay for five get requests per object. So that can be a lot <laughs> depending on the number of objects or it can be um, nothing because it's a very low volume of data. So that depends heavily. And you also pay for event bridge events. So AWS Backup needs the permission to create an event bridge rule for you. And I'm not 100% sure why I couldn't find it in the docs yet, but it does. And you pay for the events going through event bridge as well. There is a sample calculation on the pricing page of AWS Backup that you can check out to get more information about that. And um, the event bridge one is probably not very significant. But there's one thing that is a little bit crazy here. So with AWS Backup, you pay five cent per gigabyte. Okay, fine. But what does the same cost when you store the data on S3? It costs only half of that. So that's quite a huge price difference <laughs> between <laughs> storing data on S3 and the standard tiering, which is the most expensive one, compared to storing the data with AWS Backup. I don't really know where this difference is coming from and why we are paying so much more when we copy our data basically to a backup with AWS backup. 
I don't know. Is, is it the enterprise tax? I don't know. Maybe. There's one thing to mention here. For other storage options like EFS, AWS Backup provides not only warm storage, but also cold storage, which is only one cent per gigabyte. So that would be interesting. So, but this is not yet available for S3, unfortunately. So we see maybe that ships in the future. Uh, let's wait for that. Whenever I look at a new service, I look at the limitations because that's where the important information is in. And that's true for AWS Backup for S3 as well. First of all, you need to enable S3 versioning for the buckets that you want to backup. So it's the best practice to do so. On the other hand, you need to think about the aspects on the data volume in your buckets that you have to pay for. So you might want to uh, only keep a few versions and then delete the older versions automatically, which you can do. The next one is um, AWS Backup works for buckets with less than a petabyte and less than 24 million of objects. If you have larger buckets, you can contact AWS support and they might be able to find a solution for that as well. But that's probably um, fine for most use cases, at least for my <laughs> use cases. And then there are a few unsupported storage classes um, that AWS Backup does not support. For me, the most important one is probably Glacier Deep Archive. But yeah, that's probably fine because you're using that to store backups anyway. So yeah, I don't think there's too much surprises in here. Um, that's about the limitations. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video of AWS Backup for Emerson S3. If you're interested in more details, check out our blog post on cloudonout.io. And also, don't forget to support our, our work. You'll find more information about that at cloudonout.io support us. I'll be back with another video soon. Bye.